One of the real pleasures of living in Arizona is being close to all of the wildlife that surrounds us. Whether you spot cottontails in the urban park or watch your favorite birds in your own backyard, wildlife is never very far away. Well, I wanted to uh, thank you folks for coming on out tonight. Uh, this is our fifth or so bat workshop that we've done, maybe sixth. And uh, they we're sitting right on top of a big flood control structure here that runs a mile under the city. And there's about 7,000 bats or so that are uh, using this as a roost site. Uh, they exit at three different localities. They exit here, and we get about roughly about a third of the bats out this end. Some nights they give us a great show here, some nights it's so-so, so we can't you know, promise a great deal, but we will see bats for sure. That's right, bats, thousands of them, right here at 40th Street and Camelback. The yeah, bats in this colony are Mexican free tails, when, when and Mexican free tails are one of those species of bats that tend to form the largest colonies. Uh, Carlsbad, Bracken Cave, the cave you, or the bridge you always read about over uh, in Austin, those are all free tail bat colonies. Free tail bats are migratory, so they're only going to be here for the next few weeks, and so on into October or so, and then these bats are going to leave just like. Uh, white-winged doves and many of the other birds that migrate here and they're going to fly down to Mexico and some of these are going to go way 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 down into Mexico and then they're going to show up typically they start showing up in April and they reach their full complement or their, their full numbers by May sometime and we usually start our bat watching workshops about May mid-May early May uh, to take advantage of the bats and get as many uh, workshops as we can. The people here tonight are attending one of the Arizona Game and Fish Department's free bat workshops. They're held throughout the summer before the bats head south for the winter. About 80% of the bats found in the world are insectivorous, and all the bats that live in this roost are insectivorous. So they're eating moths and beetles and mosquitoes and all kinds of things that we generally find annoying and, and often consider pests. And bats are very important that way. Some of the bigger colonies eat, uh, like the one out of Carlsbad Cavern or Bracken Cave, eats 20 tons of insects a night. And, and granted, that's a very big colony, but something like this is probably uh, consuming several hundred pounds of insects every night, this, this colony alone. Besides getting a cool bat poster and other educational materials, participants are also treated to a presentation that will dispel a lot of myths about bats. Uh, they're animals that are greatly misunderstood. They're one of these type of animals that the more we understand, the better idea we've got of what they do and what kind of threat or uh, the role they play in the environment, the kinder we tend to be with them. And that's the whole idea of this workshop, that if you guys get to see them, get to be around them a little bit, learn a little bit more about them, the next time you see a bat fluttering around a light or you end up with, with one accidentally in your home or roosting on your porch, you're not worried about it. Uh, bats don't bite people um, unless they're handled. Uh, we don't have bats flying into people's hair or things like that. That's a, that's a wives' tale. But bats often will fly very, very close to you. So if you're out and you're standing around, it's not uncommon to have a bat, bat fly within a, a couple inches of you because he's catching the insects that are attracted to your body heat and the CO2 that you're giving off and things like that. And that tends to scare people. And again, those bats aren't going to run into you. They don't want anything to do with you. They're just going about their day-to-day -day activities. Finally, the light is low enough and the bats begin to emerge from the tunnel, and the show begins. Where are the bats going when they leave the tunnel? They are going to your neighborhood. And so they are going dispersing all out over this town. No doubt many of them are feeding right over this canal that is going to uh, house a lot of insects. They're going to drink over the canal, but they're going to disperse. Some bats will fly 30, 50 miles or more each night to go out and feed. So they can cover a tremendous distance each evening. And so they're, they're the bats you're probably going to be seeing around. Although this species typically flies high enough to where you generally don't see them once they disperse. The Arizona Game and Fish Department offers a wide variety of free or low-cost wildlife workshops every year all across the state to help the people of Arizona better understand and connect with the wild environment around them. Pretty interesting and kind of scared. Scared? What, what they, they look like what you think they were going to look like? No. What do you think they were going to look like? They're going to look like pretty vicious bats, like in the movies. 
<laughs> oh, it's great. I love to see these things fly around. It's a real good opportunity for us to um, see them in this, their habitat. And... By attending workshops like these, people become more aware of the wildlife that shares our city and hopefully they will use that understanding to make the human wildlife experience a richer and safer one for both the people and the animals.